So here we have the Megger DET 2 3 ground tester. We're going to show you the most fundamental and also the most accurate and reliable, which is fall of potential. Note that the instrument has four terminals and a port. But in this particular case, we're only going to use three of the terminals. All your leads and terminals are color coded to reduce error and make testing time quicker and smoother and just go better in general. We're going to start by showing the short green lead that goes from what will in this case be a common terminal which is the P1. It also has a couple other designations for different coding systems. Note we're going to connect this now to our test item which in this case will be an on-site ground rod and we're going to measure the resistance of that rod using the fall of potential procedure. We've connected our common to the ground rod and now our other two critical leads and probes will be the current and the potential and they're color coded red for the current and yellow for the potential which is pretty much industry standard but a critical factor here is distance and so we want to connect to our ground rod with a measuring tape and we're going to run this out. Initially, and in most test situations, you want your current probe out as far as you can get it because you want the resistance of the current probe to be out of the measurement. You don't want that to be part of your measurement. So to get it far enough away, it's a good idea if possible to walk as far as you can with your longest lead which industry standard will be your red lead. So when you get out to the length of the red lead you're going to then drive in your probe and you're going to attach your red lead to the probe. When the tester is energized this will establish a unique test current through the soil from the current probe to the test ground. The task of stringing leads is necessary to follow potential, but can be tiresome and time consuming. But note how easy it is with the ETK accessory kit that allows you to readily string together as many reels as are required to get the distance necessary to construct the follow potential graph. The reels also make it easy to pay out and retract wire without the tangling and knotting up that are common nuisances with spooled wire. The total distance to the current probe is then divided into as many equal intervals as the operator deems fitting. The procedure itself does not demand a specific number of measurements or distances to the potential probe. The operator's experience and judgment are vital here. There are tables available in the ground testing literature that provide various suggestions for distance to the current probe and the distances for taking the measurements. These suggestions are typically based on the size of the electrode, either depth of rod or diagonal of grid. When the first probe distance is reached, again with the convenient 100 meter measuring tape provided in the ETK kit, the potential probe is driven into the ground and the yellow lead attached. This will be your first measurement and note that in most common soil conditions simply hand pushing the probes in will be enough. They don't have to be deep driven. Test indicators on the instrument will advise if enough contact has been made to take the measurement. Now note that in this case we'll set the selector switch to the manual position. The continuous position helps in stabilizing in noisy environments but here we're pretty quiet. Then we'll select a three pole test. We press the test button and the display starts by indicating that the probes are making sufficient contact, indicated by a check. 
the current probe will take a bit longer because it must inject the maximum amount of current possible in order to get the reading to as many decimals as possible. Once accomplished, we see that we have 1.590 ohms. We can note also that the test has been performed at 128 Hz, shown on the display. This is also adjustable to prevent noise interference. And finally, we hit the Save button. And now we'll move the potential probe out to the second designated equal interval and drive the probe again. We'll continue to watch as we make the rest of the designated measurements. Note that the first measurements differ by less than a tenth of an ohm each, and so they can be averaged at 1.708 ohms as our test result. Towards the end, the readings begin to deviate a bit more, and the last reading rises notably. This is due to the extraneous resistance associated with the electrical field of the current probe. Fall of potential is not the only way to test the ground, but it is the most thorough, reliable, and recognized. Other methods serve one of two purposes, quicker and less work, or addressing difficult test conditions. And the DET 2-3 can perform them all.